Um, my name is Sean, um, and I'm going to be doing sports in China. Um, so first, a little introduction. I just click. There we go. Um, who am I? I um, am a senior here at the University of North Carolina, aka also the National Championship University, as we all probably know. Um, and my major is psychology, and my minor is Chinese. Um, and that is also why I'm also focusing on China today. Um, my parents are first generation immigrants from China, and so I grew up in a Chinese household, and I visited back multiple times throughout my life um, and next year I will be staying here at Chapel Hill pursuing my master's degree in teaching for elementary education so this is perfect um, but the reason why I wanted to focus on sports today is because of obviously this past semester has been very much uh, overrun with basketball and especially in our state and at the school so so I wanted to um, kind of focus on sports um, in China specifically. Um, it's, it's kind of a field that I personally don't know much about. So doing this and preparing for this uh, presentation, I was able to learn as much as I hope that you all learn today as well. So let's get started. Um, so first off, I wanted to ask you all a question. Um, and if the teachers can write in the answers in the chat box or so, um, what are some sports that you play or just physical activities that you do? And what do you think are some of the most popular sports here in America that you watch, that you participate with your family or friends in? Um, yeah, so if you can take a bit, and I'd love to see your answers. This will be in the group chat. Yeah. Soccer, basketball, football, karate, baseball, volleyball, a lot of any everything with balls. Yes, that's very popular. And tennis. What would you say is the one first most popular sport in America? That is very like, this is American sports. If a class can come to a consensus. All right, I'm waiting for football or soccer. Did you know, fun fact, soccer in every other country other than the US is actually called football. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because we're playing with our foot, with the ball. But somehow the U.S. has changed football into a different sport. So now it's kind of confusing. So make sure if you're talking to someone outside of the U.S. and you're referring to soccer, that it's actually football. Because they don't understand what soccer is. But basketball, yes. Basketball is very popular. And I was also thinking baseball. Yeah, American baseball is very, very popular here. Awesome, thank you for those answers. So now on to um, thinking about the country that we're gonna talk about. What do you think of for sports in China? What do you think of when you think of Chinese sports or Chinese physical activity? What's something that comes up in your mind? And you can write it in the chat again. There's no wrong or right answer. Just want to see what y'all are thinking. I see kung fu, swimming, gymnastics, dancing. Anything else? How about some athletes? Do you know of any Chinese athletes? If you can think of any. It's kind of hard when that country's on the other side of the world, so. I think, is that Bruce Lee? Yes. <laughs> I agree with that. Nice, nice. Okay. 
So, um, oops, how do I, there we go. Okay, so I kind of searched up on Google the first images that come up for Chinese sports. We have here ping pong um, to the left. We've got um, kung fu in the middle, kind of with all the kids in line, karate, kung fu. Um, and then two stars, um, Yao Ming, I don't know if um, you all know of him, but he's probably one of the first kind of, uh, he's a basketball player and he became really, he was one of the first Chinese uh, famous basketball players that came to America. Um, and so he was kind of like a model image of um, kind of a basketball player from China. Um, and someone said gymnastics earlier, so yes. Um, so yeah, y'all have kind of like an idea of it and we're gonna go more into it now. So um, starting off with kind of traditional sports um, or traditional physical activity, I wanted to touch on martial arts slash Kung Fu, what we talked about earlier. Um, so first off, um, there is a difference between Kung Fu and karate. They're not from the same country. So Kung Fu is from China, but karate is from Japan. Um, so some people sometimes get those two mixed up because they both start with K and they kind of have the same idea and the same uh, physical activity. But remember that Kung Fu is from China while karate is from Japan. Um, so this practice has been going on way, way before even being able to physically write down or record history. Um, there has been multiple styles that has branched out from this uh, art, and I listed some of them here, Shaolin, Tai Chi, and Xin Gong, and I'll kind of go into those briefly. Um, but pretty much think about it as like, people are trying to figure out ways to defend themselves and fight for themselves when they didn't have weapons yet. So that's how old this, this practice is. Um, and now it's been kind of also, certain branches of it has been um, more into uh, showing artistic style and beauty and also like working on health and being more healthy and active as well. Um, so Shaolin um, is a branch of martial arts that started in the Shaolin temples in Hunan. Um, there's some movies out there. I think Bruce Lee was in probably one of those movies as well. Um, but it was a very famous temple that um, was a teaching place for people who wanted to learn this type of martial arts. Um, and so that temple is very famous in China. I think I've, I've visited way back um, when I was in middle school or elementary school, so I don't really remember it, but it was a very grand temple and a lot of uh, disciples would go there and practice this art. Um, tai Chi is um, this art of more working towards having a healthy life, exercising, and kind of having self-care. Um, and it is different from the um, typical, I think, martial arts that we think of, of fighting and like uh, battles and such. And it's more of an individual, um, slow moving, but powerful uh, way of exercising. Um, most times, if you're in China and you're walking around, you might see like the middle picture we have here, where there's a group of people practicing Tai Chi in the middle of a park or on the street. And they're all just kind of doing the movements together and practicing it and um, just like having a healthy way of exercise for the day. Qing Gong is one that um, I don't think many people have heard of. I didn't personally, um, I've never heard of it before searching this up, but it's kind of the same as um, Tai Chi where it is focusing more on um, balancing one's body and breathing and um, slow movement and just working towards a healthy body. Um, one thing, other thing I want to mention for Tai Chi and Xin Gong is that they're very, very connected with uh, one of Chinese uh, tradition and culture's belief of Taoism or Taoism. Um, and that belief is just very much uh, surrounded by take oneself and going with the flow, going with the flow of nature, going with the flow of water. Um, and so a lot of the movements you'll see include like flowing and kind of um, 
mirroring and reflecting what nature shows them. But yeah, so that shows you kind of um, martial arts really uh, evolved with the Chinese culture and tradition and history. Um, and there's still so many branches and it's been able to go global as well. Um, you might have seen some Kung Fu studios around your city or town, your area. Also Tai Chi might be something that people are starting to practice, kind of like yoga. Um, but yeah. So my second one um, I wanted to go into um, is the dragon boat racing uh, kind of sport or um, activity. And this um, is interesting because uh, there is a festival that goes with it, um, and that's the Dragon Boat Festival, which is May 5th, so coming up soon. Um, but there's been some legends to how this festival began, began and how this boat racing tradition began, um, back to about 2,000 years back, way back in the old, old days. But um, there's not one exact story for why it happened, but there's two that I pulled out that was very interesting, I thought. Um, one of them is a Qian legend, which is um, Qian was a poet, a very, very famous poet back in the day. Um, and he would console the emperor at that time and give him advice or whenever the emperor had a question, he would try to answer it. But there was the time where the emperor did not believe what Qin Yu was saying. So he accused him of lying to him and pretty much... Um, pushed him out of his, uh, his palace and told him to go away. Um, he was so devastated that um, he, was, uh, he drowned in the river. And the villagers um, all around the area um, really, really uh, in, were, was inspired by him and praised him that they wanted to go out into the river to find his body. So while they were doing that, they had to get in boats and they had paddles and they were looking around the river. And that's how kind of the idea of the river paddling and boat racing started. Also, another thing that goes with the Dragon Boat Festival um, is a type of food that you eat, which you see in the picture in the middle. Um, and this is called, uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what it's called actually. Um, but anyways, it's, um, it's bamboo leaves wrapped around rice, and um, in the rice there is a filling, and that filling could be sweet, it could be salty or savory, um, and people eat it, and it's known, it was kind of thought, or the legend is, that because the villagers didn't want the fish to find um, Huyun's body first, they threw these um, foods into the, to the river so the fish would eat that food instead. Um, but yes, it's a little, I don't know if that's 100% true, but it's a legend. So that's what people <laughs> talk about in China when May 5th comes along, they celebrate. Another um, legend was uh, about a young girl named Cao Yi, who um, was trying to find her father's body um, in the river. Her father was going out into the river one day to go fishing and then never came home. And so she wanted to go find um, where he was and while she was trying to find him she also unfortunately drowned and um, people very much praise her because in the Chinese culture there is that value of loyalty and honor and that's what she was doing for her father and then as more as I searched into some sort of sports or activities um, I came across horse racing. Um, and this isn't really like a typical, I think, sport that we think of. And especially it's very different from the horse racing we have here in America. Um, this is more in the ethnic minority group of uh, the Mongolian descent, uh, descents. So this is more upper in North China, where there's a lot of mountains and plain lands. So the horses can run around. But um, in China, there's a lot of ethnicity groups, as we do here, a lot of people from different backgrounds and different cultures and histories. And one of them is descent people from Mongolia and that um, people who have descended from Mongolia and such. Um, and it's a fun fact, uh, or 
it's a fact that horses are really, really important to this culture because they're a nomadic culture. And that means that they just move around constantly. They don't stay in one place. Um, and how do they move around? They need to have something to carry all their stuff. So horses has been uh, a very solid animal that has been carrying all their stuff around and so they can travel and constantly be on the go. Um, kids in that culture start learning how to ride a horse at the age of five. That's really young. I mean, I think I just barely started to walk or run by the age of five. So if you all were at the age of five, you'd be learning how to ride horses by now. Um, and that's really, really cool. But um, the reason is because horses are needed so much in their daily lives. Um, when they go out to get their food, they must have be on a horse to go long distances. Um, yeah, so they need their horses in their daily lives. They also use um, horse milk and they use it in their food. They use horses just as much as they can. Um, uh, yeah, and so it's a very important animal in their culture. Um, and because they use horses to travel long distances and such, they've started a horse racing festival or competition every year in which the open plains of um, northern China are just open up for them and the horses run free and um, people ride them. And there's a picture of that down here. Um, and you see it's kind of different from derbies over here where the horses are limited to one lane and there's kind of just one area. But this is the whole running field is a whole plain, which is really cool. I want to show you all a video um, about an art or a dance kind of called bamboo drifting. Um, I didn't know about this until I was looking up for this uh, class and it's really, really cool. I want to get your thoughts about it after. So I'm going to play it now. So what do y'all think about that? If you want to, is there any comments? Um, you can type it into the chat. Do you think that's hard, easy? Can you do it? Yeah, they make different shapes. Yeah, they're structures with the bamboos. It's an art, isn't it? They're good at balancing. That is very hard. Yeah, it's very hard. Do you just see the long sticks they had when they're walking or when they're standing on top of the floating bamboo? They use that to balance to make sure they're not too heavy on one side or the other. Yeah, very difficult. And yeah, I bet when they're practicing and they're first learning it, they probably fall a lot into the river. What do you think about the ballet part of it? Yeah, because ballet by itself is already really hard. And then you have to do it on water? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like she is practicing a lot, so she knows how to balance. but. So much balance required, I agree. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. And I think um, one thing they mentioned in there that I'm not sure if you caught was that they're afraid that this tradition is gonna be um, lost because young people aren't really paying as much attention to it. Um, but as we saw, the ballet girl was kind of young and she looked like she really is changing how it is usually done and adding her own twist to it, and adding ballet to it now. Um, so yeah, thank you for your comments. We can keep going on. Okay, so now I want to move more into sports that maybe you have heard about, or modern sports um, that China is pretty well known for and kind of dominates in that sports realm of. Um, so the first one, table tennis or ping pong, they're the same thing, just different names. Um, this one is interesting because this did not originate in China. This is actually from England in the 19th century. So this was invented and started off in Europe. Um, and what happened as uh, culture does happen is that when you travel around, um, you bring what you learn from your old culture into this new place. And that's what happened with the British officers when they were in China. Um, and in Asia overall, they introduced this new 
sport, which was table tennis and ping pong. And then people in Asia, um, especially China, um, liked it a lot and really took it up. And now um, China is one of the dominating um, the sports teams for table tennis in the world. Um, another interesting thing when I was looking up ping pong was um, how ping pong became a um, a way to connect the U.S. and China. So China for a very long time was closed off to the rest of the world um, from 1949 uh, all the way till 1971. The whole world didn't really know what was happening in China and China was just closing its doors, not really interacting with anyone else until the April of 1971 where China out of nowhere kind of invited America's ping pong team to come over to have a competition. Um, and that was the first time that China has extended their invitation and arms to America. Um, so you see this picture in the bottom is a picture of um, the team, the American team, ping pong team on the Great Wall. Um, and so this was kind of, not only was ping pong used as a sport in a competition, but it was also used to build a relationship between China and the US. Um, and that was from there, from the ping pong tournament and the competition, um, China and US's relationship kept on growing and continuing. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. The next modern sport, um, badminton kind of, um, is the opposite on how it happened with ping pong in that it started off in um, Asia and China and then it kind of fused out and traveled over to Europe and the rest of the world. Um, so kind of like an opposite effect. So it started off with just um, a simple little uh, ball that um, called Ti Jianzi where they would use your feet, uh, like, uh, players will use their feet um, and it's kind of like a uh, sack ball and you can just like throw it back and forth with your feet and you can't use your arms or anything um, and then evolved into something called batter door and shuttlecock in which they use the batter door which is a paddle and a shuttlecock which is just like a little ball um, with um, it's like a shutter pretty much shuttle and they um, use that to throw back and forth um, the ball. And if you can look in the picture on the top, that is kind of like the traditional more um, how China, uh, Chinese people did that. And then from that, um, as the British uh, officers I mentioned earlier, um, were able to pick up that sport in China and bring it back over to England, as you can see with the image on the bottom. Um, and then eventually, it spread all over the world and now here we are everyone knows about badminton and play it's a very popular sport um, but it originated in Asia um, and then spread it out versus ping pong which actually originated in Europe and then spread out to the world so yeah that was kind of an overview I thought of some of the main um, sports or physical activities that people in China are known for and have done